video game industry is officially bigger than the movie industry. And yet, companies still have trouble translating what you experience to what you see on the big screen. But today I'm not talking about movies. Today I'm talking about TV shows. For today's episode, I decided to look up 5 examples of video games that surprisingly enough ended up as a TV show. Not necessarily just animated, but obviously this is where the majority of my research ended up. If you can think of any TV shows that originally were video games, then write them down below. You never know, it could end up in a future episode. So, no messing about, here are 5 video game TV shows you never knew existed. Welcome to Slope's Game Room. Okay, so let's start off with one that was a surprise at first, but not so much anymore, because I mentioned it in my last video. Yep, Parappa the Rapper had an anime. Well, actually it had two, but let's start with this one. Produced by JC Staff and Production IG on April the 14th, 2001, it ran for 30 episodes of its final show airing on January the 14th, 2002, and has a soundtrack that was composed by the series designer Masaya Matsura. Off to a great start! In the first episode titled The Initial P, Parappa's bike gets stolen, and because of this, he can no longer go and see Sunny Funny and Katie Cat or PJ Berry which he sort of double booked. Yeah, it's a very basic show aimed at a slightly younger audience than most. Is it worth watching? Absolutely. If you're a fan of those games, that is. It's unlikely that you'll ever make it past one or two episodes unless you're a real hardcore fan, but for curiosity's sake, well, I had a lot of fun watching it. Plus, the show has two soundtracks available to buy on CD for the more hardcore hip-hop canine-loving PlayStation fanatics out there. Fan service done right if you ask me. Which brings me on to PJ Berry no Mogo Mogo Munya Munya. These are actually anime shorts lasting around 90 seconds apiece and were released to celebrate the 20th anniversary of the game and the 15th anniversary of that original anime. This time the show is based around Parappa's friend PJ Berry. Most of the cast is completely absent, with PJ, Parappa and Chop Chop Master Onion taking pretty much all of the spotlight. What you end up getting is a far more sketchy, comic book style feel of a show. A couple of quick jokes and then that's it. You can easily find yourself watching several of these in a row, and they are actually quite good. I personally prefer these over the original anime, and as of the making of this video, they are still regularly airing them on Japanese late night TV. Of all the gaming franchise of the 90s by EA that they could have turned into a TV show, they decided to go with the 1993 Mega Drive game Mutant League Football. Now this may not be too shocking for the majority of you guys out there who for some reason call this football and this soccer, but for the UK market it's quite an obscure choice. Either way, the game became so popular in the States that it not only spawned a spin-off titled Mutant League Hockey, an unreleased game called Mutant League Basketball, but also a very short run comic in Sonic the Comic based on, you guessed it, an animated TV show. The animated show simply titled Mutant League ran for two series starting on July 1994 for 40 episodes and was so popular it even ended up with an animated movie. Only joking, it was actually several clips from the series cut and pasted together and sold on VHS as Mutant League the movie. And if you've never seen this then watching at least the beginning of the movie will probably be the best place to start and more than likely be the place that you stop watching too. 
Set in the futuristic year of 2004, toxic waste buried under a game of American football spills out during an earthquake turning all the players into mutants. Mutants that play sports. Now this is a kids show so the constant killing of the characters like in the game is obviously not going to be happening here. But that doesn't stop the mutants losing body parts, albeit in a very slapstick sort of way. I don't like football and I never played this game. So it's not surprising that it had no impact on me whatsoever. And watching it back now, it's not great. But then again, maybe I'm not the best person to ask. Oh, and by the way, little side note completely by chance, whilst editing this video and searching on Google for anything else to add, I was surprised to see that a Kickstarter for a spiritual successor of the game went live the very same day I edited this segment. And in regards to that Kickstarter, well, let's just hope it's the last time we ever mention it. We all know that Street Fighter had a TV show, a web series and a few movies. We know Mortal Kombat had two live shows and several movies. Don't forget Samurai Showdown or Battle Arena Toshinden or Fatal Fury. Heck, even Tekken had movies, animated and live action. Ah, so that's what happened to Jesse from Free Willy. But the one that really surprised me was Virtual Fighter. Okay, it didn't have a movie, but in 1995 it did start a 35 episode long anime. And what's better, again I only watched the one episode and a few clips, I quite enjoyed what I saw. Sadly falling under the shadow of other more popular gaming franchises at the time, Virtual Fighter the anime is actually one of the better ones out there. in Japan compared to the competition, the anime was designed to not only make money but to also give the lifeless characters of the game with practically no backstory some much needed appeal. Produced by TMS who was already responsible for working on such great animations as Sonic X, Akira and um, the Gummy Bears, these guys had the rare privilege of being given a hugely popular franchise and other than the character designs, they were given free reign to do whatever they wanted. The end result is a show that has a clear, non-confusing plot, great characters, great music and considering it's based on a very repetitive game, it isn't a consistently repetitive show. When the show was airing outside of Japan, it sadly did so badly that funding got pulled from production resulting in only 24 of the 35 episodes being fully dubbed. However in Japan, the show was so popular that it got a game based on it. Yep, a game turned into an anime turned back into a game for the Game Gear and Master System titled Virtual Fighter Mini in its country of origin and Virtual Fighter Animation for everywhere else. Now in all fairness the game does try its best to give a nice storyline, but obviously due to the limited hardware it really is quite hard to enjoy. It uses all three buttons this time strangely enough, not only one and two but the start button as well. It does this weird zoom in and out depending on your distance to your opponent and in a nutshell it's impressive for the hardware but crap to play. But I suppose the soundtrack's pretty decent. When you look up most violent video game lists, what always comes up? Narc. Sure, by today's standards, it's not exactly breaking any rules, but in 1998, the drug dealer mutilating shoot 'em up game gave parents even more reason to hate on the arcade gaming world. But come on, you should know better. When a fuss is made over a controversial game, it gets even more popular. So popular that a couple of years later, it ended up getting ported, pretty damn well, might I add, to loads of systems including the ZX Spectrum all the way up to the Nintendo Entertainment System, keeping both sides of the pond happy. Now sure the suits at Nintendo put some fairly big parental restrictions on the rare port, yes that rare, but you still go about shooting the heads off bad guys and picking up cocaine. 
Anyway, before the 2005 sequel with the awesome soundtrack was released on Xbox and PlayStation 2, in 1990, the same year the NES game was released, Acclaim, the guys who published it, decided to turn that cocaine-grabbing, drug-dealer-killing game into a kid's show. Yep, I'm not joking. It wasn't long before this that the popular Captain N, the game's master, was pushing its way into the eye sockets of young Americans that owned an NES, and Acclaim was trying their best at taking a piece of the pie. Nark was part of the Power Team, an animated series that ran for 55 episodes within another show called Video Power. And to join him on his journey, the oh-so-popular video game character was joined by... Heroes from the Wizard and Warriors games, Quirk from Quirk, Tyrone from Arch Rivals, and Bigfoot from Bigfoot. It even had an animated version of Johnny Arcade, the host of the show, playing the games before they come to life. Now obviously the characters have a far more 90s tubular design about them, especially Max Force from NARC, but it doesn't take away from the fact that this was a bloody strange choice for a kids show. They really went full pelt with it, even having Mr. Big, the final boss of the game, as the main bad guy throughout the show. Watching it now, and for the first time might I add, I don't need to tell you that the show reeks of that cheap 90s animation that plagued most marketing cartoons designed to sell stuff to kids. Sadly the story, characters and animation like I said is so bland and forgettable that yeah it might have helped sell the odd copy of Quirk, but really all it was was an annoying 15 minutes that you had to sit through before you can get back to watching stuff like this. Next up, Revenge of Shinobi for Genesis. Here's the way to get yourself an unlimited supply of shuriken. Select shuriken, now press A, B, and the C buttons as fast as you can. Faster, faster, keep punching the buttons until the infinity symbol appears. Under your number of shuriken. <laughs> All the shuriken a player could want. The trick is fast fingers. Now, at the end of stage five, you'll encounter... Okay, so what popular video game franchise do you think made it to the number one spot? Well, let me help you out with this one. It's not an animated show, it's actually a quiz show. The longest running quiz show in Belgium, starting in 1994 and now currently has over 4,500 episodes so far. Yeah, okay, it's actually called Blocken, but let's face it, it's Tetris. Hosted by Belgian TV personality Ben Crabb, Blocken, which translates to simply blocks, involves several rounds. The first requires the contestants to answer a series of typical game show questions. The first one to answer correctly gets 10 points and the chance to drop two Tetrominoes. This involves quite a bit of risk and reward. You see, the person that ends up getting that final line ends up getting 50 points. In the second round, the same thing happens again, but this time individually. The contestant must choose the order of five questions, going by the type of question they are. For instance, pop culture, sport, geography. You get the idea. He is then given one tetromino for answering question one correctly, two tetrominoes for answering question two correctly, and so on and so on. The third round plays pretty much the same as the first, but with a slightly different question format. Depending on what season you watch, you also get a Take It In Turns Tetris Challenge. And finally have that 120 second round, answer as many questions as possible and try to work out the hidden word. Sort of like Wheels of Fortune meets Tetris. So yeah, a Tetris game show sounds stupid, but it actually works. 
It's obviously incredibly popular, even getting a kids version of the show. Although, as it's illegal for kids to win money on European game shows, they are instead competing for a holiday. And yes, obviously an iPhone version of the game does exist, as does a crap ton of those different family board games that you no doubt see every year on the run up to Christmas, which then gets taken to a boot fair or a charity shop two months later. And there you have it. Easily the longest running video game based on a TV show of all time is actually based on the second best selling game franchise of all time. And good old Alexei Pudgenov obviously got no royalties for this either. Hey there guys, whether you're watching this on Larry Bundy Jr's channel or My Slopes Game Room channel, thanks very much for watching. Click the links on the screen or in the description to check out either of our channels and Patreon pages. But for now, that's it from me. This is DJ Slopes signing out and hopefully I'll see you all next time.